one, two, three, and f it. That's the method this Redditor talks about in his post called, I had really bad anxiety and this is how I fixed it. Before you completely dismiss this technique as something that's just kind of weird and doesn't really work, let me show you the science behind it and how you can use this simple technique for your own social anxiety. It looks like this Redditor didn't even really know the science behind this technique, but he still benefited from it. Have you ever heard of Mel Robbins? She is a motivational speaker and an author of the book called The Five Second Rule, which is essentially the same premise as the technique the Redditor used of saying one, two, three, and f it. So what is the five second rule? About a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them. It's okay if you still feel skeptical up to this point. Let me tell you how this actually works. It's something called metacognition, which is basically a fancy word that means your ability to outsmart your brain. There's a really good article on medium.com that explains the science of how this works. And in this article, it says, when you count backwards, you break unconscious habit loops and replace them with deliberate decision-making. Researchers found that 40% of our mental and physical behaviors are routines wired into our limbic systems, which is the emotional part of our brains that tends to think pretty irrationally. And when you use this five second rule, you are interrupting those patterns and you start using your prefrontal cortex instead, which is the part of your brain that thinks more logically and rationally. I like to think of the prefrontal cortex or the PFC as kind of like the CEO of your brain. When the PFC of your brain is activated, it allows you to skip past your brain's resistance to change. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. So how can you use this effectively for your social anxiety? You are going to start using this method to help you with exposure therapy, or how I like to say it, find your first or next baby step uncomfortable challenge. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check out one of my recent videos that I made where I explain what exposure therapy is and how and why you should use it. Here's what you need to do to make sure this is successful for you. Use my five second rule in combination with what I call an anchor thought, and that is going to reframe what your mind is doing so that your mind goes from feeling agitation and making you afraid to reframing it from agitation to excitement. Mel takes you backstage to show you how this agitation or anxiety reframing to excitement actually works. All right, I'm about to go on stage. There are 7,000 people out there, and it's so exciting because what they don't know is they're about to learn the five-second rule, and their lives will never be the same again. Now, I gotta tell you, my heart is racing. Um, my armpits are sweating. I have the exact same physiological feeling as when I'm afraid, but I'm not afraid. I'm excited. Excitement and fear is the exact same thing in your body. It's just what your brain calls it. Here's a trick that's proven by science that I use every time I speak. When I start to sweat, when I start to have butterflies, when I start to have my heart rate, I say, I'm excited. I'm excited to get out there. I'm excited to talk to these people. I'm excited to share the five second rule. And what that does is it sends a message to my brain that tells my brain why my body's all agitated and excited. And that way I don't feel afraid. If you're having doubts about the idea of reframing anxiety to excitement, start paying attention to the next time that you get really excited and the next time that you start feeling really anxious. You'll notice that these feelings are the exact same. That's why you can 
trick your brain into thinking you're really excited instead of really anxious. The hardest part of taking on, you know, your first baby step uncomfortable challenge or your next one is the actual first step to doing it. You know, the actual initial effort to getting that challenge going. Once you do that though, the rest is relatively simple. It's your first initial action towards the challenge that can be the challenging part. Here's what the process will look for you when you do your next or your first baby step uncomfortable challenge. Let's say the challenge is to raise your hand and ask a question in class. On the way to walking to your class, you're gonna start saying this to yourself in your head. I'm excited to ask a question in this class. I'm excited to grow from doing this. I'm excited for others to hear my voice and perspective on the subject. Keep repeating this to yourself over and over again. Now you're going to sit in your desk and just start listening to the teacher give their lesson to the class. When the first thought of a question that you want to ask pops into your head, you're going to do this. Count down from five in your head. After one, you're going to shoot your hand up in the sky before your brain has a chance to keep you from doing so. Next, the teacher or professor is going to call on you and you're going to ask your question. Voila! You've completed your challenge and now you can look on to what's going to be your next challenge. Or maybe you're going to do the same challenge again tomorrow. Don't forget, you did something amazing by going outside your comfort zone, which is something that few people do, socially anxious or not. Go reward yourself for putting in the effort to do that. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Also, please leave a little like on this video so I can reach more people and expose them to more information about social anxiety, exposure therapy, and other mental health topics. I'll see you all next week. Peace.